Good morning. I am so tired still, but I'm really excited. I start my orientation in uh, about an hour. So um, I was going to give you guys a little bit of a heads up about what I have learned so far about the camp. So there are 700 refugees still. A lot of them have been rehomed uh, in Greece, which is which is amazing. Um, there's are about I think four NGOs at the camp. So Lighthouse Relief is one of them. That's the one that I'm working with. And then there is IMU, which do uh, classes and English classes um, for the refugees. Then there's the Red Cross, of course, and they obviously deal with mostly health stuff. Um, and then they bring people to the hospital. Um, and there is, I think, one more that I don't really remember, but I, I'll obviously learn more about it today. So, um, there are three main areas that Lighthouse does. They've got a female-friendly space, which is for the women to take off their hijabs, and like they just hang out, they paint their nails, they, um, they also get educational, um, information about, um, especially like young mothers, like breastfeeding and uh, general like, hygiene. Um, but there is a bit of a difficulty right now because they don't have um, an Arabic translator. So I think they did for a little bit, but people are always in and out. So they have a lot of refugees, or sorry, volunteers that um, are here for a month and then they leave. And then, you know, then they're, they're lacking like a really big portion. So it's not, um, sustainable as much as some of the bigger um, nonprofits would be. Um, the Red Cross usually has a translator, but it's um, they're often at the hospital with the refugees, so they're not always on site. Um, so basically, there are three main areas that Lighthouse Relief works with, uh, one of which is the female-friendly space. And that's basically what it sounds like. So there are, um, women can come in, it's a big fenced off area that uh, Lighthouse has built that um, is a safe space for women to take off their hijabs. They just, they come in, they paint their nails. They, um, they actually learn um, about their bodies during pregnancy. <clears throat> um, breastfeeding, uh, hygiene advice, so they also have been asking for classes recently, uh, for English classes specifically, even though IMU does offer it, so that might be something that we consider um, just casually, just to, I guess maybe more of like a tutoring session I think would be more sustainable because IMU is already kind of covering that. Um, there's also a female friend, or sorry I said that, uh, the child friendly space, which is being um, um, sorry, what's the word? Uh, it's not consolidated. They're getting rid of it. Sorry. I know there's a better word for it, but because the kids are going to school in Greece. So the seven to <clears throat> sixteens are now going to primary school or whatever. Um, and all we have now are the under sixes. Unfortunately, there have been protests by the uh, Greek parents about going to school with Syrian refugees and they've been pulling out their students. So that might be something that's in the news that we're going to have to look into today. There's also a construction area. The tents are um, mostly set up, but they need repairs because there are a lot of refugees that have been here for a very long time. And there's holes in the tents and things that need to be replaced. They, we also build ramps um, and pathways for wheelchair accessibility uh, and elderly refugees that can't quite make it up some stairs. So that's basically what we've been doing. Um, unfortunately, Lighthouse is fairly underfunded. So our struggles right now are finding enough money to like give the refugees what they actually need. So it's not so much that we don't know what they need as much as it is that we can't fund it. Um, and I've got a couple people asking about donating physical items rather than um, money. And I will say a few things about that that I've, been, I've learned so far from some of the other girls. It's all about sustainability with nonprofits. Um, once I'm gone, I'm only here for four weeks. Once I'm gone, they want to be able to still get those same things that I was, I was bringing in 
that, so it, if you were to send me a box of, let's say like a hundred toothbrushes, you'd get them from your local supermarket or CVS or Walgreens, or if you're uh, European, you get them from like Little. But then where would we get them from when I'm gone? And they don't like to cause jealousy in the camp. So if they can't give one to everyone, they don't like to give them out. And it's also Greece has a really terrible economy right now and it's kind of falling apart. So it's better if we were able to include um, local businesses so that we would use a, like a merchandiser or someone that sold toothbrushes that we could do in bulk and uh, to boost the Greek economy. So it's all about keeping it local and keeping it sustainable. And a one-time donation of like a pack of goods, like if you were to if you were to create all the, this box and send it to me, like that's good. But a lot of times they won't even give it to them because it creates more problems than it solves. Honestly, I know that sounds ridiculous, but it does because like let's say something breaks. Like let's say you give you send baby bottles and and one of the like the the lids breaks and there's no way to replace that because they don't have the same ones around here. So then you're just like piling up broken things that we can't fix or, or, um, or replace. And it also creates a lot of hostility in the camp and they get into a lot of fights. Like for instance, someone came and dropped off 30 uh, bikes for the kids, which is really nice. It was really well intentioned, but all the kids are fighting over them. They're stolen from each other constantly like every day like there there's it's like why did you get it and I didn't because it was like a first come first serve basis so it's creating a lot of hostility when you do things when you give things to someone that are not all the same because unlike in like let's say a capitalist society where you earn the money and then you buy whatever you want this is just like a, a, a volunteer base so everything has to be absolutely uh, even so if you were thinking of doing that um, I would suggest instead, if you if you would rather not just send cash um, every day, I'm obviously going to keep posting these. Um, I'll let you guys know exactly what we need at a certain point in time. If you want to specifically donate on that day, um, those funds will then go towards uh, that that exact whatever it is, you know. So. I guess that's all I have for now. I start orientation in a few hours, so I will let you guys know what I learned from the camp today, um, tomorrow.